Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. This video is another installment in the Attack of the Clones series in which I look at clones that are pretty much one-to-one -one replicas of legit phones. The phone archive series is more catered towards the weird, strange and obscure phones, whereas Attack of the Clones is more for the one-to-one -one replica sort of thing, mostly the ones that run Android anyways. And in today's one we're going to be having a look at the Goo Phone Note 5 which I assume that's what they called it back in the day. And it is based off the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, which was released back in 2015. And you probably would have stumbled across the Goo Phone Note 5 on DHgate and all the other usual sites for about a hundred bucks. Now, in regards to this series of Attack of the Clones, I don't want to review newer phones that have replicas made of them, because there's a bunch of legality issues and stuff like that, which I don't want to really get into. Plus, Goo phones on DHgate already tell you the specifications and all that stuff, whereas ones off Wish, AliExpress and all that are just a gamble. You never know what specs you're going to receive. So that's why I tend to stay away from Goo phones. But the older Goo phones I can look at because the phones they're based off are discontinued now, so that's all good. And this video is just going to be sort of a rambly, chill review. Nothing special here, but I'll put the timestamps in the description so you can skip along if you need to. But otherwise, Join me as we take a look at this Goo Phone Note 5, which... This is not the Goo Phone Note 5. Fooled you. No, this is a legit Note 5, which um, has seen better days. The OLED works, no problems at all. But someone's pulled it apart, and the coating has just come off in the corners and stuff like that. But I did make this into a clear one. The back smashed, but that's okay. It still looks pretty cool, though. Uh, this is a 64 gigabyte one, or 32 gig. I'm not too sure, but it's a dual SIM one. So we have this, right? So... Just take a look, all the fingerprints. And I will display the main specifications of the actual Galaxy Note 5 on screen for you all here. So 1440p display, 16 megapixel camera, Exynos 7420 octa-core, 3000 milliamp hour battery, glass front, glass back, aluminium frame. Now there's no micro SD card slot on this device. We'll get to that. 32, 64, or 128 gigs of storage. But now, let's take a look at the Goo Phone, in regards to where I got this from, I found it at eWaste. <laughs> of all places, eWaste. Uh, this was just in the bin full of phones, and I've just went, really? Who would throw out this? And when I opened it up, I quickly realized what I was dealing with, and I paid 10 bucks for this. Worth it. Absolutely worth it. Not really. Uh, yeah, so 32 gigabytes. It's the gold platinum one, Samsung Galaxy Note 5 around it. It's looking all legit. Even got a legit Samsung sticker on the top, just to make sure. Gold platinum, there it is. But on the back, it says Samsung Galaxy Note 5, 4G LTE, 64-bit OxCore processor, 4 gigs of RAM, the 143.9 millimeter, 5.7 inch Quad HD S AMOLED display, 16 megapixel OIS and 5 megapixel cameras, wireless char charge ring, charge ring, but then they got charging pad required, nice. Nox protected and 32 gig of memory. I've got a couple of other things down there, just like so, which the model number is the SM9200. Out of all of these, which are correct? None. None. Absolutely none. This phone is pretty much exactly the same as the Goo Phone S7 that I had a look at, which I'll cut up here if you want to take a look at that. This is pretty much exactly what we're dealing with here, but it's just the Note 5 version, that's all. And flipping it open, we have the phone. But let's just put that to the side for now. And we have a quick start guide, which is for the SM N9200, which looks all legit. If you bought this, you probably thought, hey, I have got a legitimate Samsung Galaxy Note 5 for only 100 bucks you would have been wrong. I don't see any spelling mistakes or anything like that, so that's all good. And inside the box, you get this battery. <laughs> so uh, this was the original battery that was inside of the phone. I kind of left a pretty damaged iPhone 5 battery on top, and it started to leak battery acid all over this. And well, this battery doesn't even work anyways, but uh, I'll get to the whole battery situation once we sort of tear it down, because I had to borrow a battery off another phone and put in this Note 5, so then it'll work. Uh, we get some earphones as well, headset, Equatair, okay, made in China, cool. And then we get the power brick, which absolutely weighs, no it's made of nothingness. And also the Samsung logo is uh, brilliant. It's Samsung, you know. Uh, what are the specs? If you want to have a look at the specs just there. Is this sort of... Oh, this is the same one as the Wish ones. It's got Russian and it's got made in Vietnam and the text is just so poor quality. And yeah, it just weighs absolutely nothing, but that's okay. We're not really here for the accessories. We just want to look at the phone itself, which right here is the Galaxy Note 5. And it says that it has a Super HD AMOLED display, has Android, Bluetooth, and NFC. How many of these are correct? Two. Two of them are correct. So yeah, if we take the plastic off straight away 
you'd think, yeah, okay. I mean, next to the actual Note 5 itself, there are some differences like the screen size and stuff, but the red flag here is the build quality. Plastic on the back, plastic on the sides, the whole thing's made of plastic, whereas you've got glass, glass, aluminium. Camera in there, and the uh, sensors and the LED flash in there, as opposed to the real one, you can actually see sensors and an LED flash in there. I mean, there's an LED flash in there, but the rest of them are just complete duds. And then down to the bottom, we've got some text there. Can't really say that's looking the greatest and mine's obviously gone and smashed and that's okay. The bottom though, so the real one's on top versus the goo phone just there. They're fairly close, not really. The antenna lines are a little off. On the side, the volume buttons are pretty much in the same place. At the top, we've got the SIM trays in the same place, microphone holes. I mean, they're fairly close. It's not too far off. And then also the power buttons as well. Front camera, earpiece, and the sensors on the real one look a little something like that. And on the Goo phone, they look a little something like that. The camera's a little bit off-center, but I'm sure that's okay and it should work. It does work, I can tell you that. And they've also put this curve on the back as well to make it look legitimate, but like, I could probably... I've probably already broken it. <laughs> Whoops. That's the best way to describe this, is that it's just plastic and it weighs about half of what the actual Note 5 weighs. Now the S Pen is just this metal slab thing. The buttons don't do anything. Is there any, there's Samsung branding on it, but that's pretty poor. Uh, yeah, this is the S Pen. The real S Pen actually clicks and pops out like so, and has a button on there. And if we take the SIM card tray out, that's just it there. We've got support for just one nano SIM, which I'll put an Optus SIM in there, why not? And now a controversial topic about the Samsung Note 5 lineup, as well as the S6 lineup, there was no micro SD card slot on these devices. Samsung decided to take them away, then restore them on the S7 series, for them to only take it away again on the S21 series. Do you want to know how to put a micro SD card in here? Super simple. You just pop the back off like so, and you just put your micro SD card in like that and just ignore everything that you've seen, and there you go. Clickety-click, we're good to go. Powering on the wonderful Samsung Galaxy Note 5 Goo Phone thing, here we go. This is it. Looks somewhat legitimate. The text is a little bit off, but as I said, if you've bought this off DHgate back in the day, you probably would have thought, hey, I've got a legit one. I've got a legit Note 5 for only a hundred bucks. Even got the boot sound as well and the boot animation, so all's looking pretty good. One thing I want to mention quickly though is the vibration motor on this thing. It sounds a little bit dead. Here's what the vibration motor sounds like. Kind of sounds like a lightsaber that's sort of kind of dying. But anyways, we've booted up. I don't think we have any service as of yet. I believe this is a 2G only device. And unfortunately, Google Pinion IME has already stopped working. We are off to a fantastic start. Swipe along and you've got Galaxy Essentials, Galaxy Gifts, and you've got everything going on here. And all the applications pre-installed as well, which we will come back to. But we've also got Face Unlock and N22 Benchmark is installed by default. I wonder why they've put that on there. To prove that it's got legitimate specs, that's why. Straight away, the user interface feels very, very sloppy. It's not in the slightest way smooth at all. And then swiping down... This is looking sort of like Android Lollipop, I'd say. And we do have all the usual options at the top here. NFC. Now let's put that on for the whole sake of it. Smart Stay. Torch. The torch looks a little something like this, which honestly is not the worst torch I've seen on a clone device. Look at the lag, though. <laughs> they tried. They really did. So, the S Pen. All right. It's got a sensor to recognize that it's been put in. Pulling it out. Oh, look at that. So you can go to memo, and now we can create a memo, which we can now draw that. Let's give him a collar, some shoulders, and that didn't even work. That's fine. Uh, that's looking good. Because there's no button on here, they've got a little on-screen button there to bring it all up. So you've got S-Note, which, uh, well, it's gone now. I don't know where it's gone to. Uh, screen right takes a screenshot. Yeah, it took a screenshot. Screen right was take a screenshot. Hang on, I'm going to do that again. Oh, no, no. Oh, wait. Whoa. Yep. All right. That's screen right. Smart select. It's probably the same thing, I'd say. Yeah, it is. Okay. S note will open again. No. Oh. 
S note, you can draw on the screen and it'll open an application. Okay, fair enough then. Well, I think before we have a look at all the applications and stuff, let's jump straight into settings and have a look at the settings of the Goo phone, which we've got Wi-Fi. Does it pick up my, no, it only picks up my 2.4 gigahertz network. So I'll leave that for now. Bluetooth is just Bluetooth. Airplane mode is just airplane mode. Mobile hotspot and tethering. You can do that if you wanted to, probably wouldn't work. NFC and payment. So this is where things get really interesting, is that half of the things on this phone don't even work. Mobile networks, let's see if we can choose a network operator. So it says GSM only, but, but we can change it to 3G. So let's just see if... Okay, maybe it is only 2G. Sounds and notifications though. We have the default ringtones, which are gonna be a little something like this. All sounding legit. I will dump the system files off this so you can have a look through this thing if you want to. Feel free. God knows what's going to be lurking in this thing. Display. Uh, do we have... Where's the wallpapers? Oh, they're down there. Okay. Air command for the S Pen, which is the floating icon and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Air view, direct pen input. And the pointer. Oh, there's a pointer. Yeah, see. Doesn't work. Motion and gestures, direct call, smart alert, mute, palm swipe to capture, gesture settings, motion activation, all the stuff we've seen on welcome devices before. I highly doubt any of those would work, but anyways, the application list, we can have a look at the applications installed on the device, which if we go to all, we can see that we've got 25 gigabytes free. All right, so I'll just scroll through the app list. Probably gonna be some dodgy stuff on here, but I wanna open some of the, oh, cheeky Android, hello, how you doing? Uh, I wanna open some of the applications that, oh, face unlock, there's two of them, <laughs> sorry. Uh, G apps, I will actually open the applications that are on this phone just to have a test and see if they're like the legit Note 5 ones, or if they're not like the legit Note 5 ones, most likely that's not the case. Like we've got S Health twice there, Scrapbook, Sim Toolkit, Jelly Bean, System Lock, To Do, Twitter, all that sort of stuff, WeChat, YGPS, YouTube, and something that's in Chinese that I don't know what it says with a happy blue guy there. Okay, all is good. Wallpapers. You can choose all the ones that are stolen off the Note 5, because that would make sense. So you've got all of them here. And honestly, I will say, honestly, at this point in time, the display doesn't look half bad. For a really cheap, shitty clone, it doesn't look half bad. It's acceptable. And it also is an IPS LCD as well, because the viewing angles, you can pretty much see it like that. So I'll set that as the wallpaper, and it's got a motion effect as well. Lock screen and security. What can we do here? We can do a face unlock. Can we do a fingerprint unlock though? That's the thing. Because the real Note 5 had a fingerprint unlock, but it doesn't look like it. We could do voice unlock and all that sort of thing. Let's do face unlock. Look at your phone to unlock it. Okay. Oh yeah, the camera quality on this is uh, fantastic as well, by the way. Okay, never mind. Face unlock just crashed. Everything's going to plan completely. Cool. All right. Privacy and safety. We'll just leave that. Easy mode. Easy mode. Easy mode. No. Half the stuff doesn't work, as I said. Accessibility? Need a screen reader. No. Would it even work on this? Probably not. Accounts. Can you add a Samsung account? No, you can't. But you can add a Google account if you want to. I'm not going to be adding a Gmail onto this phone because I've got my SD card with all the apps on there anyways. Some of the other Goo phones based off Samsung phones do have the option to add a Samsung account, but I don't know if you would really want to do that because I have a feeling it would just take your information that you've put on here and then just run away with it. Uh, battery, we have 75% left. Storage, we have, well, as you can see, we've got SD card, which is 32 gigabytes, and the phone storage is... What's the phone storage? We'll just leave it as SD card, date and time, all that sort of good stuff there. Use a manual. Of course, that wouldn't work. Developer options. Guess we can just have all them on. And about phone. Finally, system updates, software updates. You've got two of them. And of course, the serial number on this phone is 01234567898 ABCDF. Nothing changes here. But it's a Galaxy Note 5 SM9200. If we go to the Easter egg. Right. Shows Lollipop, Bamboozled, it's Kit Kat, but it's actually Jelly Bean. Just not an agree with this, okay? Just not an agree. Kernel version, build number, and software version. No hints as to what this could possibly be at this point in time. I'm going to connect to Wi-Fi, and we've also got the Samsung-looking keyboard here as well. Almost one-to-one, -one, remember? So let's go to System Updates. 
network connection failed. Let's try software updates. System updates. Oh jeez. Yeah, you can tell us jelly bean. But we're all up to date, so we can't do much. That's settings though, so there's not a lot that's sort of really going on in here. It's the applications installed by default that we sort of really want to take a look at. We'll open up the phone dialer, which looks a little something like this. Does it have the test menu? Of course it does, and it looks exactly like the test menu that you would actually see on legit Samsung devices, which... You can test various features. Second earpiece does work. Vibration, here we go. Works perfectly fine, no problems at all. Uh, but yeah, we've got that menu. Now I've also got another application. I was told about another application that scans for secret codes. I have this on my micro SD card and I'm gonna install it and we'll see if we can pick up any codes that are built onto this and see if we can change maybe the boot animation or something like that. Contacts is gonna show you contacts, which my Optus SIM card has the kids helpline on it by default. Messages, it's all been factory reset, nothing here. The internet, oh boy. Oh, well, uh, okay. Probably because the date and time's wrong, I'd say. No, the date and time's correct. Google. Amazing, we've got Google. And how does browsing on the Goofo Note 5 kind of feel like? Crap. Because it's barely loading anything and it's super laggy and... I'm thinking this maybe has 5-12 megabytes built into it, maybe. Also, I can't open a web page, but from Google alone, I don't want to browse the internet. That's completely fine. It's just basically a novelty and that's really it. It's not practical and can't really do a lot. And a lot of people do buy these Goo phones just for the whole sake of it. And I can understand why, because, you know, they're fun to play around with. But realistically, there's not a lot you can do with these. Email is just going to open up email. Gallery has all the pictures and stuff that I've taken with this, which the next application is the camera. Oh boy, the camera. That autofocus doesn't work. Actually, let me just say, 90% of the stuff in here does not work. You can... The main thing to do with this is don't touch anything but the camera shutter button and the video button, nothing else. Do not touch anything else. Because what happens is, if you try and stuff around with the settings, it will just either take pictures on its own, do burst shots, or whatever. Uh, mode. Oh, God, mode actually came up. So all of these options here, you can toggle them, but none of them work. Just exactly the same thing. You can change the picture size just to 5 megapixels. It's zoomed in by itself again. It's now recording a video by itself. I managed to actually take some photos and videos with this. And I'll show you them in a second. But the video size on the rear camera, you can do 4K, 1080p, 720p, and 480p. The default is 480p on both 720 and 1080p. If you choose 4K, it records in 720p, which was kind of a surprise when I looked at the photos. But anyways, you've got video stabilization, guidelines, none of these work. Save as raw file, nothing works. And the volume key, which uh, you can set that if you want to. But honestly, the camera is the most jankiest thing ever. It barely works. And when it does work, you just don't want to even use it. Beauty mode and all that sort of stuff, HDR, none of it works. None of it works. It's just all here for decoration. But anyways, I'm going to splice in the pictures and videos here for you all that I took with this and uh, you can have a look at the quality and just go, yep, 2015 quality, goo phone, good stuff. We'll be back in a moment. I have absolutely no faith in this camera whatsoever. This is the the rear camera quality for the Samsung Note 5 Goo Phone clone ripoff thing. Doesn't have autofocus, has 
pretty much this jelly movement going on, no EIS, no nothing. Uh, it likes to just take photos whenever, it likes to randomly take 40 pictures when it wants to. Uh, it's just, it's fine, it's perfectly fine, this is normal. Yeah, everything just looks kind of uh, like that now. I can see, poor Stuart. There's the lonely lemon there. More lemons. I don't even know if this is going to work or not. Oh, yep, there we go. Oh, look at that. Yep. This is 4K. Supposedly. I'll just agree with this. Once again, I have no faith in this whatsoever. None. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. It's exactly the same. It's just... I don't know. Slightly higher resolution? Maybe. Probably not. Shit, what's going on here? Everything's good. You know what? Everything's fine. Oh, dear... God, what even is this? This is the front camera of the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 goof phone. I have no faith in this. <laughs> it's good. It's look, look at the jelly. Woof! Look at that. Oh, shit, that's uh, fantastic. Good. And well, we did get some uh, kind of okay shots, but. Yeah, as I said, it'll just start taking 30 images at a time if you just press in the wrong area. Uh, HDR doesn't work, beauty mode doesn't work, nothing works. And the front camera kind of works if you want to look dead, like I do in these pictures here. Yeah, it does work. Uh, actually, I want to open up these Galaxy Essential stuff. Just just opens the Play Store. Never mind. Uh, touch and hold? Ooh. Home screen settings. Card stack and my magazine. Of course that wouldn't work. Music! We can do the speaker test! So by default there's actually a couple of songs that are pre-loaded onto this. We've got the Cranberries, Green Day, Dido as well. So yeah, those MP3s are hidden away in the system files. That's uh... that's not legal. That's okay. Anyways, BFG Division on the Goofo Note 5 sounds a little something like this. Not a terrible speaker. Not the worst, not the best, it's just average. It will do. 101.2 we got to. And just by playing an MP3 file, it feels like this phone's overheating already. We have video next, which is going to just play the videos back. Settings we've been through. Calculator looks like... a calculator. Clock looks like... a clock. Don't know if these are pinched directly off Samsung, or if they're just sort of the generic sort of Android ones with a skin on top of it. I'm not too sure. Uh, S Planner uh, looks like a uh, calendar. Cool. Heart rate. Oh, these are fun. It's measuring my heart rate. All right, let's not even touch. The, where, where's the sensors anyways? Try to keep still and quiet. All right, let's get in there. 62 beats per minute. Well, there you go. Uh, we'll just do that again. Uh, measure the heart rate of this plastic pick. You can do it. Cool. What was the heart rate of that? Oh, 62 beats per minute. Maybe it's more. Yeah, look. We'll just put it on the back and hope it does something. There you go. 60 beats per minute. There you go. You've got a good heart rate, little plastic pick. 75 BPM now. Okay. And none of the other settings at the top actually work. File manager. I'll come back to soon because I want to install the applications. S health is exactly the same thing. All right, cool. Voice search. Open Google. Fantastic. Uh, the Galaxy Store. Oh, I kind of was hoping that it would open up some bootleg Samsung App Store, but no, nope, just wants to open up the Play Store. Sound Recorder looks like the sound recorder off the Galaxy series running Android 5.1, roughly, yeah, something like that. S Memo, which we've already sort of opened, it shows the clouds and you can draw stuff, that's all good. Twitter. Uh, it's going to want me to sign in, but it has Twitter on here by default. Maps is going to look like maps, I assume. YouTube's up next, which is actually going to... Oh, no. Okay. Uh, we could do it through the browser, but the browser doesn't work, so... Uh, let's just try this then. Why did it just show... What? Did, what, what? did you see it? Infinity none, 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 it said. Okay. Oh, 360p. 720p we can play it back in. Whew, all right, go on. Let's see this playback in 720p. Oh. Yep. 
it's going good. I mean, this is the browser, so, you know, take it how you will, but yeah, yeah, I didn't think we'd see anything good out of that. I mean, it looks nice, the display anyways, and the video looks nice, but it's just, yeah, 480p would probably work, 360p did work just before, uh, but I think you get a general idea that this thing's not really made for, as I said, anything practical. It's just made for more of a novelty to go, hey, look, I've got one. What else have we got in applications? Scrapbook, I think, is going to be what we've already seen before. Good scrapbook. Loving it. WhatsApp, going to want me to sign in. And 22 Benchmark, actually. Let's see. Oh, and 224. Okay, this is a bit outdated. That's all right. Let's see what this says. It's going to say the exact specs of the Note 5, I reckon. There we go. Uh, no, it doesn't. It shows we've got an MT6582 in here, Mali 400 MP, 540 by 960 display, 6.2 megapixel camera. The IMEI is just there. If you want to look that up and see what it corresponds with, feel free to let me know. Memory, we've got 10 gigabytes available. RAM is 2.2 gigabytes. We've got 64 gigabytes internal memory. Okay. Dual core 6582, Mali 400 MP. 6.2 megapixel, 6.2 megapixel, Android 4.2.x, 4.2.2 probably, and uh, stuff that this thing doesn't support. Fair enough. Why would they preload this on here by default and tell you the false specs? Straight off the bat. That's smart. Back on Restore is the one on normal Android back in the day. Yep. Downloads, nothing in here. Face unlock is... Okay, no worries. I'll try this again and see if it works this time around. Or if it's going to crash again. Alright, let's try that. Let's see if face unlock worked. Sorry, don't recognize you. No worries. Oh, it actually works. And Google stopped working again. Oh, no, it actually works. That's surprising. Well, actually, it's not surprising at all. It's just taking a picture of my face and that's it. Well, at least it didn't crash this time around. Facebook's going to want us to sign in. FM radio. Can we... You need to use an earphone as an antenna. You know, the time where I need 3.5 millimeter headphones, I don't have anything to, oh, yes I do. Aha. Never mind. gesture settings. These are the ones where you can draw on the screen and it opens up stuff. And it needs face unlock. Can't connect to the camera. It's completely broken. Local app is, what do you do local app? This is reading the applications off my SD card, and I can just go ahead and install these, which I guess is actually kind of helpful, but I'll go into File Manager and install them myself. But, yep, that's all good. WeChat's going to want us to sign in, so a Skype, Smart Memo, we've already sort of had a look at. It's the same thing as Best Memo. And To Do is going to be your To Do list. That's basically it. We've got widgets, and can we move them around? We can, yep, all good. That's the, the Goofone Note 5 taking a look at its basic functionality, it's terrible. It's terrible. The Goof S7 was exactly the same. It's just all for novelty, performance, and anything like that. It's just not even close <laughs> on this thing. But let's install some applications, test them out, see how we go, and then we'll tear this down and have a better look at the insides of this. I've installed a couple of applications, like Device Info Hardware, CPU System Info, the Secret Codes application, which we'll take a look at soon, and Grand Theft Auto 3. Let's see how well GTA 3 runs on this phone, which I'm not too sure of the specifications as of yet, but we'll get to them soon. Okay, never mind then. Well, there goes gaming out the window. We'll just open up Device Info Hardware and see what this says. MT6589, hey? Android 5.1.1, all right. That's incorrect. 512 meg RAM and 4 gigabytes of internal storage. What a very, very sad day. The 540p display isn't too bad though. MT6589, but it's dual core, Mali 400 MP, that's usual. System 4.2, Jelly Bean, there you go. 512 meg, 4 gigabytes, 16 gig SD card. The cameras, 5 megapixel, and there are. Uh, not the greatest as you've already seen. The battery says 1000 milliamp hours, and I'm not even sure what the battery's actually meant to be. Thermal, it's starting to heat up a little bit. Sensors, we have, we actually have one of these. No, no data from the sensor. Now, I never knew this, but there's a screen test based in device info hardware. Never knew that was there, but multi-touch wise, what have we got in here? Five point multi-touch, holy moly. That's actually not too bad. CPU system info last, which will show us the true specs of the phone. And it shows we've got an MT6589 in here, which is incorrect. Memory, this is all incorrect. That's incorrect. Well, it's kind of correct. Battery, uh, nothing. Thermal, sensors, cameras, 7 megapixel back. That's not true. 
same as the front, not true. So we know that it's got 512 megabytes of RAM. We know that it's got four gigabytes of internal storage, but the CPU reckons MT6589, which is a little strange. It's probably gonna be an MT6580. Let's try and open that secret codes application and see if it comes up with anything. There you go. So what this does is it scans for the codes. I'll link this application down in the description below. So feel free to try this on your own device and see what it comes up with, but I'm not responsible for any stuff ups or anything like that. If you go play with these applications and stuff up your phone, it's not my fault. It's just the applications there. Okay. All right. Engineer mode. There you go. Opens up engineer mode where you can test a whole bunch of stuff if you want to. Nothing really super interesting in there though. Uh, the next engineer mode is exactly the same. The next engineer mode is exactly the same. Do we have anything that could be no. So unfortunately in here, it all looks, oh no, there's something different there. That's that one. Yeah. So unfortunately all the codes on here don't really do much, but if we look through the system files, we may find something possibly. But at this point in time, we've pretty much went through everything on this Goo phone. It's just not that impressive. Half of it doesn't work and what does work doesn't really work that well that made a lot of sense. While it's not unusable, it's just not practical for basically anything. It's just a plasticky heap of crap, pretty much. That's it. That was a fun review, but I think what I'll do now is factory reset this, dump the system files, and then we'll tear this down and call this a video because it's just, while there's some funny things on here, it's just not exactly the greatest thing to look at, as I've said, S Finder opens up YouTube, no worries. Quick connect, doesn't do anything, yeah. Just barely works. But anyways, we'll be back in a moment. All right, these system files have been pulled off this phone and I'll upload those to Mega, so feel free to go through them. However, Windows did pop up saying that there's a couple of viruses in there, so uh, be a bit careful when going through those applications. But otherwise, when I factory reset this, I had some night shots that I did with this phone and I've completely wiped them and uh, can't get them back now, but that's okay though. It's not really that impressive. The LED flash does work on this, but as you've seen during the pictures, it's not a really great camera anyways. But let's go ahead and tear this down and have a better look at the Goo phone and see what processor it is. If it's an MT6580 or MT6589 or whoever knows what it is, there you go. All right, cool. I mean, I will give credit to them for making a back cover removable and the battery being removable as well. That's something you don't really see too often. And on the Goo phone, it's something that the Note 5 actually didn't do. Expandable memory, removable battery, and removable back cover. What more could you ask for? So a bit of an explanation about the battery is that when I got this, it didn't power up. There was just no power, tried charging it, didn't display anything, nothing. So I took it apart, well, just took the back off and seen that the battery was replaceable. And then I got my Goo Phone S7 and put the battery into that and it all worked fine. And that's how I was originally doing the camera tests and stuff with that battery in there. However, I've recently done inventory and all my clones and stuff like that. And I've got a really shitty, and I mean really shitty, Galaxy S8 Plus clone. It wasn't even of the actual Galaxy S8 Plus, but of what it was supposed to be looking like. And I've got that and it boot loops, unfortunately. I did make a video of it back in the day in like 2017, but that video is extremely terrible. Sad that I can't now make another one because yeah, it just boot loops. But the battery is this one just here and that fits in here perfect. So that's how I was able to uh, put that in there and got a battery working. So taking the plastic off though, have a look at the, oh my God. All right, cool. So let's take a look at everything on this motherboard here. So that's our back plastics. The speaker's just sitting there. That just sort of falls out. Where's the little sensor for this? Where's the little sensor for the S Pen? I'm not too sure if it's like a little magnet just here or something like that, but it does detect it. I know that. The bottom PCB and the capacitive buttons are all on this PCB just there. And you can actually remove it like so, like the real deal, except the flex cables underneath. I've got a single wire. We've got a couple of screws that we need to take out. So there's the cameras just on the same flex ribbon, like so. There are some codes just there. If you want to look them up, feel free. That's really not that interesting. And with everything being disconnected, we now have access to the motherboard. The frame of the phone is just a really, really thin metal frame in between the screen and the motherboard, and there's all the flex ribbons just there for everything. We do have a code on the screen just there. If anyone wants to look that up, feel free. There's nothing really super interesting in here. It's the motherboard that we want to take a look at. The sensors, I just want to show you the sensors, by the way. They've just stuck this uh, bit of adhesive over these pads here to make it look like they're sensors. Smart. 
There's also a code just there, which I can see BT plus Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know what it says next to it there, but that's okay. Uh, the chips are on. Oh, we don't have to do anything. The chips are right here. Okay, well, we've got Samsung flash module likely just there, which would be our 512 megabytes. Then we have, I think that's Micron storage. That would be four gigabytes. And then we have the MediaTek MT6572A. So that's what's running in this, an MT6572A, not an MT6580 or anything like that. Also, there's a button there. That hole at the top of the phone wasn't a hole for a secondary microphone, it was a reset switch. But that's the motherboard right there, in all of its glory. There's nothing super special going on about this one. I think it's got the same specs as the uh, Gufone S7, if I'm not mistaken. I think that had 256 megs of storage, whereas this has 512 meg. But they're basically exactly the same thing. I'm sure that it looks exactly the same as the Gufone S7 anyways. Not a whole lot to really look at, is there? It's uh, fairly basic and bare bones. I'll go ahead and put this back together, see if it still works, and then we'll finish off this video. Alright, well, in its puff, sort of assembled state, I'll just see if it still works. It still works. It lives on. Yay. Well, if you want to learn the specifications of the Gufo Note 5, feel free to pause the video here and have a look at them all. I'm pretty sure everything's correct except the battery. Once again, I'll just have a guess and say it's a 1500 milliamp hour one. But pretty much I don't even need to compare these with the real specifications because they're just not even close to the real specs of the actual Note 5. But anyways, that is the Goofone Note 5. Why do they call these things Goofones? I have no idea. Maybe it means something. I don't really know. It's been sitting around for a while and I thought I'd finally get around to actually doing a video on it and here we are. I'm glad that it's finally done because this thing was kind of doing my head in. It's just so janky and half of it really doesn't work and metal S pen with just a metal tip. Everything's just wrong with it. As I said, more of a novelty, not practical at all, unless you want to just say, hey, look, I've got this Note 5 and I paid 100 bucks for it in 2015, as I've already said. That's pretty much it with this one. I'll leave it here, and uh, I don't know if I'll leave the battery in this or not. I'll have a think about it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It wasn't really anything special. I hope you got some sort of entertainment out of it, though, or you learnt something along the way. Probably not, but that's okay. That's all I have to really say about this phone. I'll put the system files on Mega. The secret code application I'll also put in the description. So thanks for joining me in this journey to have a look at the Goofo Note 5. I hope you enjoyed it for what it was. As for the next video, I've got a couple of things in mind, and I'm not too sure which one I'll start with, but I'll work it out. But anyways, everyone, Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you want me to have a look at more Goo phones, not new ones, older ones that I do have, let me know and I'll get around to making them someday, one day, who knows when. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I'll just put this back together off camera because it's just easier. Okay, that's all good. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.